Producers, Scalar 3.2 just dropped and there are a ton of updated and new features. I'm gonna cover some of my favorites, some of the highlights in this video and a little bit of a tutorial along the way, but I'm gonna leave a full list to everything in the video description. Click the link to update for free if you already have it. And if you don't, now's the time. Let's get into it. Okay, the first new feature you'll notice is that we have a new welcome screen here with the ability to launch a tutorial. If you wanna get rid of it, you just have to click anywhere else in the UI and it will go away. From there, the next new feature is the ability to search scale. So before you could come in here and go this way, but now I can just search for something like D minor. Boom, and now I have that. Love that. And if I wanna see all the scales again, I can go away. It also updates as you type. So really, really great functionality there. The next new feature is the ability to change the voicings over here. We can flip through if we wanna to get to like ninths, or we can click right here and jump into all of the different variations and versions, substitutions, voicings, and extensions. So this is great. So let's go ahead and make something. I'm gonna click the lock right here and then come into common progressions. I'm gonna come down to pop and thickened and boom. I'm gonna bring that into the main and I'm gonna flip over to modulation. And this is not new, but I'm just doing it for the sake of the video because it's gonna come in handy in a second. I wanna go from D minor to A minor. So it's gonna give me my chords, the modulation pathway. There is a pivot chord over here and then the destination scale with a suggested progression here. What I'm gonna do is just take these. I'm not gonna forget my pivot chord. Uh, and then I'm just gonna take these and oh, slide over. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about are scenes and these actually do a lot. So let me show you. If I highlight these, you can see this plus comes up. If I click right here, it becomes a scene. I can right click and rename it. Let's call it verse, hit okay. So I can also do that over here, but there's another new feature that's really cool is if I come on and like highlight both of these and right click, I can now double the length of those or half them. And obviously I've got five chords here and I want it to remain in a four chord sort of pattern. So I'm just gonna hit half the length and it's gonna neatly group those together right there. Then I could take these, slide them over, and then if I highlight, I can right click and add to new scene, but generally speaking, the plus is the easiest way. So again, rename. Now you can do a lot with scenes. So for example, if I click right here, I can move the entire scene. You can look at it like a group. I can duplicate, I can delete. And if I delete the scene, the chords will remain, or I can I make this a new scene again. I can come into here, right click, delete scene and content, I'll get rid of the chords. So scenes are a lot of fun, but they have, also have some other functionality. And that is if I come over to the front page here, I can now bind the main track and then I can bind individual scenes down here. So right now, you'll see that I'm playing those. If I wanna come over here, Bind these, you see that now that I have five. Isn't that great? I'm gonna jump back in here. The next new feature, if I come up to here and hit articulations, there's Divisi. If I come in here and click one of these, I have the Divisi option. So if I double click to bring up the MIDI, by default, it will follow the lowest note of the chord. But now I can bring it up to the second one and the third one and so on. I can add as many of these as I want and really start to spread things out easily enough. All right, the next new feature, again, if I come into addition, articulations and user, I can now add my own keys and record them in just like you would inside of your DAW. So if I go ahead and hit this, I'm gonna get a four beat lead in and then I can play, and I'm gonna play on my keyboard. So please um, be gentle in the comments. And it's that simple. I'm gonna save you all with having to play on my keyboard for that. And overdub is on by default. So if I do this again. You can see that it'll just add. And then of course I can come in here and edit to my heart's content. It will follow anything you have down here like keys locking for scale notes map, notes only, white keys, chords, extensions and scales and so on. It will also use the performances as well. So all good things to know. And this is incredible. This is 
multi MIDI device output. You can select your device and you can get output for each one of the MIDI channels in Scalar 3 into Ableton Live. This is usually not possible. There's a little bit of magic behind it. I'm gonna show you exactly how to get it done. And I'm sure you already know why it's so powerful. All right, step one, if you're on a Mac, IAC driver should already be installed. I'll leave a link to this. This is how you can go ahead and activate it, make it online to use this feature in Scalar 3. Loop MIDI is the virtual MIDI cable system that I'm using for Windows, but there are a few out there. This one's super easy, super lightweight. That's why I'm using it. Now this is the Loop MIDI kind of panel, and you can see that there are cordboard MIDI outs. This is what we're looking for inside of Scalar 3 and inside of Ableton Live to be able to do this output MIDI routing. Hey, it's Joshua from the future here. I've realized that I've been using cordboard MIDI out throughout this video, and this is because I have a different plugin called Cordboard Installed, which just automatically made these MIDI outs for me. You might not have this, and I just wanna show you that inside of Loop MIDI, you can just add new ports, and you can even name them whatever you want. Uh, just add it, and then I have that. Yours will not say Cordboard unless you have that plugin, but I just wanted to clarify just in case you were struggling or ran into that. So for example, on the passages right here, if I click right here, this is where you find the new MIDI output device. Uh, I can come in here and you can see that I've chosen Cordboard MIDI Out 2. Now, if you don't have Ableton Live, you've got a DAW that works, uh, you can just use the MIDI Out on a MIDI channel. But obviously you can't do that in Ableton Live. So if we go to MIDI Output Device, go to Cordboard MIDI Out 2, and then inside of Ableton Live on a MIDI track, you can see I've got the option for Cordboard MIDI 2 Out. Select it. And if I play it, you see that I'm getting that. So I've also done that for the main track. The main track has it as well, MIDI output device. You can see I've done Cordboard MIDI Out 1. And if I come over here to this other MIDI track, Cordboard MIDI Out 1. Now you can double those up, triple whatever you want. I can also mute these now in a uh, scaler and just use them for the MIDI, or I can keep the sounds because scalers internal sounds are great. But no matter what, we now have MIDI output individual tracks in Ableton Live, and it's absolutely phenomenal. And the last thing I want to show you is the ability to chord switch. So right now you can see I've got multiple progressions and if I switch through them, things are updating down here. But if I want to be able to switch through them with my keyboard, I can come into this hamburger settings, key switching, turn them on. I think it's on by default. I can save it as a default if I want. And now I can just use key switching down here to switch through them. So you see as I click, I can switch between them, clicking my keyboard. It'll be C1 up through however many progressions you have that you want to switch through. So just a big workflow improvement there. All right, there you go. Scalar 3.2 in a nutshell. As I said, there's a lot more for you to check out and understand about this update. So check the video description and of course hit that link to head over to pluginboutique.com today.